And now for a visit with children's illustrator, Wendy Rasmussen. Hi kids, my name is Wendy Rasmussen and I am a freelance illustrator. Uh, one of the areas that I illustrate uh, are children's books. And some of them are back here. I've done about 30 books. Um, I have been drawing as long as I can remember. Uh, as soon as I could grip a crayon probably is when I started. And I, as a child, I was drawing everything around me. My dog, my cat, my parents, my friends, trees, bugs, horses. Of course, horses. I loved horses and had to draw them. I probably drew horses more than anything else. But um, as a matter of fact, I found some old pictures that I had done when I was about six years old. Here's one of them. Horse in it, of course. another one, another horse. And this one I was getting I was getting a little more artistic and trying watercolors and, and always somebody, trees, dogs, people in it. So that that's my humble beginnings. Um, instead of talking about how I draw, I thought it would be interesting to tell you how a book is made, how a, a, a children's book or picture book is made. There are a lot of steps that go into it, um, and it's taking it from here to here. Now this is a book that I did, um, oh I guess about three years ago, and a friend of a friend um, had written a book, a, a manuscript, and had never had it done, so we thought we would self-publish. So the first thing that happens when you're working on a book is you get the story. And this is called a manuscript. And this, this one happens, this story was in, set in poetry form. So I had to read this over and get a feeling for the story, see what the story was about, how I pictured the, the main characters, which in this book was the polar bear, and go from there. So the first big step when you're doing a book is to figure out how many pages are going to be. Um, very important. And at this stage, it's, it's pretty difficult because you have to figure out what copy is going on each page and what image you think you would see on that page, and then count pages. So the way I do it is I I take eight and a half, eleven sheets like this, and I fold them in half, and then I just start doodling on them. And when I doodle, I mean we're talking doodle. And this is simply to break down the copy into separate pages and then to do a count. Now when you're doing a book, it always has to be multiples of four. In other words, you can't have a book with 13 pages. If either 16, that's a very small book, you can have 24 pages. This particular one is 36 pages. And the reason for that is that when it goes to the printer, they don't just print one page at a time. What they do is they take what we call spreads, which is the whole sheet. And this page may be page two, and this one would be one in the back because, as you can see here, there's page two, but look where it is in the back. So they print two here and two here, unless it's what we call a spread, which means the picture goes all the way across. Okay, so at this point, I've broken down how many pages we're going to do. Now what I have to do is think of an image that I would have on that page. I have the copy, I've decided where the copy is going to go. So this is, these are called thumbnails and you can see why because they're very tiny. So this is how I start thinking it out. Now the pictures sometimes are similar at the end, sometimes they're very different. But this is where I start thinking. So these are the pages for the book. Okay? 
So once I do that, I have to start tightening it up a little bit. And I like to work full size. Um, that's just how I work once I go from the thumbnail. Some people stay at a small size until they're ready to do the final art. So at this point, I do sort of the same thing I did there with the small book, but I'm making it into the actual size. And now I've done my pencil roughs to full size. And um, I usually end up with stacks of tissue papers like this because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of what position the, the character should be in, where it is on the page. I have to figure out what the background's going to be. So we're still still at a fairly rough stage, but this is where I we call this booking up a copy. And this is where I take the actual sketches and I, I cut out the copy and put it where I think it should go. I've already had this typeset. So this is, this is pretty close to where I want to be um, as far as the page layout and everything. So now I'm going to back up a little bit. Before I got to that stage, I had to, I had to learn to draw polar bears in this particular case. And I always think I know what things look like until I go to draw them and realize, oh boy, I really need to study what it is. So I went to the zoo. This actually, this book takes place at the Central Park Zoo. So I went to the Central Park Zoo in New York City and I looked at the polar bear and I started doing sketches. And I went online and I found pictures of polar bears and I needed to learn how they moved, how they looked when they were lying down. So these are some of the sketches I did. These are just polar bear positions and expressions, a realistic polar bear, okay? So I felt like I pretty much knew what a polar bear looked like by the time I was finished with this. So now I have to start giving my character a personality. And Polarity is a girl and she's very sweet, but she also is a little mischievous. So. I had to try to capture that in her expressions. I still wanted her to look realistic, but I wanted to get her expression. So that's what I start playing around with fun positions. She's dancing, different positions of dancing. Um, I had to, there was one page that had her in three dance positions. So now I'm trying to imagine what she would look like. So that's the next phase. Once I have that figured out, um, but actually let me show you something. I'm going to show you, I hope this shows up, the stages from, pen, from my first thoughts, my thumbnail, which was this, okay? This is where she's climbing up a wall at the zoo, okay? So this is my first thought, you know, it's just kind of a, a squiggle. And then I did it full size. It's pretty pretty similar except I have her going in the opposite direction you see because I had to put more detail here of this particular background. And then I wasn't really happy with her position so I tightened it up a little bit here. And then the final pencil sketch is here. So now what I do, uh, this is happens to be a Xerox but I usually keep it on tissue paper. And the way I transfer it, I have to transfer it onto illustration board. That's what I work on. So the way I do it is on the final, which would be on tissue, I simply retrace it on the back. I put it on the board and then I take, I take a spoon from the kitchen and I rub like that. And what that does is it transfers the pencil onto the illustration board. So now I have my sketch all ready to paint. And the medium I use, I use watercolors. And this is my favorite brush. It's called a round. See, it's round all the, 
all the um, hairs go to a round position and then they go to a really skinny point and I like that because I can get a lot of paint in there and then go down to very thin lines. So this is my favorite brush. I also use color pencils. Um, I mix them up and when I get, oh, I just got paint on my finger. Um, when I get to a point where I um, am about 75% finished with the picture, I scan it into my computer, which is over there, and I finish it off in Photoshop. And I'll show you an example of what I can do in Photoshop that makes it much easier for me. I just use it as another tool. Um, this is one of the pictures in the book where polarity is swimming underwater. So I I finished her, almost finished her, and then I scanned it into the computer, and this is how it ended up. So I was able to do bubbles and all of this on the computer, and it was much faster, and it was fun. I like doing that. So. Now I have, I've transferred all my illustrations down. In the meantime, I have someone who works with me who does what we call the production. And that is setting everything up in files with the copy where it should be. And um, this is something that will go to the printer. I don't do that right now. I'm too busy with this. So my friend Michael does this. And so he's now taking all of the copy from the manuscript and placing it in position on the full-size book, okay, this full-size book. Um, he's doing that all on the computer. So in the meantime, I'm finishing all the artwork, which took a really long time. And these are some of the boards. Now again, they're 75% finished. Um, these, these are all watercolor and colored pencil, okay? So, when I'm finished with this and I've scanned them in and I have all the art on my computer, it's all finished. Of course, throughout this whole thing I have to get approvals from my client and from the author. So, we're going back and forth and there's some changes. Now it's on the computer and I send it to Michael and he puts it onto the page where the copy is and it goes to the printer. And at this point, the printer sends me a proof, and I look at it and make any corrections, and the author, and um, if there's another party involved, they make all corrections, and then it goes to press. And voila, we have a book. And that's it. <laughs>